That's a great spare to make under some serious pressure, and the crowd appreciate it. So Ong has now let his opponent back into the game after so much sterling work, but it's not totally Ong's fault. He's trying to read that uh, lane situation. There's that small adjustment that he has made. Yeah, just a fraction different. Probably no more than an inch and a pinch between those last few shots. Dominic now needs to dominate. Needs 10. Oh, fantastic. What a way to respond for Bagger, for Dominic Barrett. And now this is getting very close indeed. Absolutely, yeah, this is great. Great for television, great for the uh, fans in the audience here. And, uh, well, Dominic's really looking good. UK's number one bowler for the last two years. Starting to enjoy himself. We're getting very close to the finishing line. And it's Dominic that's on a roll. This next ball is huge for Remy Ong in the context of this match, in the context of this tournament. The decision that he makes now is going to have a major implication on the rest of this game. So what's he going to do? Is he going to just shuffle it? Needs a strike to keep this 22-pin gap between them with two frames to go. So it's almost a must-strike situation. Got it. <laughs> Touch lucky, but he'll take it. Gets a nice little trip on that six pin from behind. But it counts as ten. That's all he's looking for. He's not going to worry how he's got it. Big ball there. And as you see, that uh, six pin's just tripped from behind. And it's a big, big strike in frame eight. And I can confirm Ong moved in just a touch. So the uh, change and the decision to change, both correct. And then he was rewarded with the strike. That's how things will end if they strike out from here. At the moment, just those 22 pins, the difference. But Dominic Barrett can keep applying the pressure here, going for a five-bagger. Oh, through the head pin. Just hooked on him. Just ran up a little bit too high. He just jumped off his hand a bit quick, I think. Lots of rotation. Fantastic uh, reaction, the back end. I think that's just inside his mark there. See, it's high on the head pin. There's the 4-9 split, and the 9 pin's gone, so he's pretty fortunate, really, just to have that single pin standing. So he was offline from the start, Cass, and you're saying as soon as that then started to hook, he was dead in the water. Jumped a bit too early on him in the, in the match, yeah. The previous winner we can see there, Nicky Harvey, centre screen with uh, Zara Glover. Just uh, making comment, they're obviously supporting uh, Dominic fellow English international teammates. Absolutely, and those uh, two ladies will be looking for the uh, Ladies World Championships in August this year. Off to Mexico, looking for some gold medals. Oh, he knows better than anyone that the door is just open again. Yeah, a striker could just uh, sew this one up. Ooh, dear, oh, he's high on the head pin. Me. And... <laughs> How <laughs> close was he there to a horrible split? <laughs> dear, oh dear, that was so close. Now, are both these players under pressure? Well, I would have think so, yes. Looking for the strike to give him the double. Can't make it. Single four pin standing on its own. I'll take that back. He got a pretty good mix onto the ten pin. Puts that one away. He did miss that in the first game. The seven pin. But not this time round. So uh, spares that. Both players have spared in the foundation frame. And Cass, this is all going to come down to their last visit to the foul line. 23 pins is the difference in favour of uh, Remy Young, the left-hander from Singapore. He's just going to have to keep the ball on the lane, and the match will be his. All Dominic can do is strike out and hope that uh, Remy goes uh, elsewhere for one frame. I can't see it. There's the first of those strikes. 4-4-9 four, four, is the maximum aggregate score that uh, Dominic Barrett is looking at, and he needs every single one of those pins. Got the potential, Cass, to be our closest finish at this year's tournament. Absolutely, yes. Uh, Dominic goes through the 200 barrier in game number two. 
Unfortunately, um, it appears as though he may be just a few pins short. He had that big open frame, don't forget, in frame number three. Went four frames without a strike and then hit four in a row. Takes a re-rack uh, on the second ball in the tenth frame. I was looking for uh, two extra strikes. Again with 2-2-4. Two, two, Here we see the uh, pin spotter, dropping those 10 brand new twister pins on spot. Possibly the last two shots of this year's tournament for the young man from England. Well, if it is to be the last two shots, this is not a bad way to go out. He does need this last uh, strike, though. Yeah, finishing in some style. Just showing uh, the calibre of bowler that he is, what he's made of. He's performed pretty well this year. Second year at the event. And he's made the quarterfinals. Strike for a 2-2-4 to go with his 2-2-5 from the first game. Not a bad aggregate, but a losing one, I think. Oh, he went way too wide. Didn't come off the hand too well there. Not made a tremendous difference, but uh, he needed every single pin he could get. 4-4-5 four, four, is what Dominic Barrett finishes with in a second game of 220, just about a par score. But it's not going to be enough, we think, against uh, the Asian number one bowler, Remy Ong. And the destiny of this match is in Remy Ong's hands. And look at that, he's going to do exactly what he does every single time. He will prepare carefully and until he's ready. We're not going to see anything from this man. Just keep it on the lane, keep it in play. Now, does he just blow into the thumb hole before he puts that in, or does he kiss the ball? It is just throws a bit of air in there just to uh, uh, evaporate any, any sort of sweat that may be there. Nice and snug. There's your winner. Great work from Remy Ong. He's come up with the goods when he's needed it. It's not his most convincing performance by any means, but we can say exactly the same of his opponent, Dominic Barrett. It's been a right old scrap, this one. And another fascinating match at the World Tempin Masters. Off the sheet for 472. It's not a bad aggregate. Has done enough. It sees him through to the, the uh, semi finals. Well, I never, if that had happened on the last delivery, then Dominic Barrett might have been laughing. But, uh, dear me, 462 is uh, maximum will plummet to now if he can clear this up. But it's uh, immaterial because this man, Remy Ong, is through. So out comes the football for the last time in this match. Dispatches three pins for an aggregate score of 460. 225 in the first game is what Remy Ong managed, but he came back very strongly in the second. 235, good enough to build a 460 overall total and good enough to beat Dominic Barrett of England. Remy Ong will go through to meet Paul Moore in an all left handed semi final. So now we know the four semi-finalists, an American and an Australian, a player from Singapore and a player from England. No player has ever won back-to-back -back titles. That's the target for Chris Barnes. Next up, it's the semi-finals and stress levels are rising. Chris Barnes meets Jason Belmonte head-to-head. -head. Find out who wins in the PartyPoker.net World 10-Pin Masters.